Okay, hello everyone. Now that we have a really good foundational basis of all the different operations that we can do with vectors, two-dimensional and three-dimensional vectors up to the scale of product, what we want to do now is we want to actually go ahead and take a look at how we can apply vectors to different contexts. Now, in particular, what kind of context can you actually apply vectors? Well, there's a couple of things that we want to go ahead and take a look at here. Of course, when it comes to vectors, we know that we're dealing with something that has a mathematical quantity that has magnitude as well as direction. And we're going to find some nice algebraic interpretations because we are actually going to be able to use vectors to describe lines in algebraic form as well as planes in algebraic form. So usually, well with lines, yes, we always have a, a uh, geometric interpretation of that, which we also knew an algebraic interpretation of. But when it comes to planes, the only thing that we always used to have an interpretation of is a geometric interpretation as just a flat, flat object that goes off in a particular direction forever. So we can actually go ahead and use using vectors come out with an algebraic interpretation of what that is using vectors. But we're going to go ahead and first start off with lines and take a look at how we can go ahead and algebraically interpret lines using vectors. Now when it comes to lines in two dimensions, there's really three equational forms that we have. Now we're all familiar with one of them, which is the Cartesian form of a line. But we're also going to have to take a look at what is called the vector form as well as the parametric form of a line. Now, what I've done here is I've drawn a diagram of a particular line. Okay, it goes through 0, 3, 2, 2, 4, 1. And when I'm dealing with the Cartesian uh, form of the line, algebraic form of the line, of course I need to find its slope. So I went ahead and I used this point here and this point here. And so I went 3 minus 2 divided, uh, divided by 0 minus 2. I come up with a slope of negative 1 half. So I know that my equation is y is equal to, is equal to negative 1 half x plus b. I know it goes through 0, 3. So I substitute 0, 3 into this equation to find out that b is, in fact, equal to 3. And we know that that's true because that's the y-intercept. And so what we come out with is we come out with this Cartesian algebraic form of the line negative one-half x plus three. And of course, there's the geometric interpretation. It's a line in two dimensions. Now, what we want to do is we want to also investigate what the vector interpretation of this line will be. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at this equation. This equation is just going to be absolutely essential for us to really get a handle on what we're doing. Now, what I'm going to say is that I'm going to talk about a particular resultant vector, and that resultant vector is just going to be the vector from O to Q in this particular case, okay? Now, if I go from O to Q, I'm hoping that everybody will also be able to see that this is the same thing as going from O to P and then from P to Q. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to call this O to P the position vector because this position vector is actually going to take me from the origin and it's actually going to find me a point that is on the line. So this particular vector has to point to a point on the line. After that, I need to go ahead and look for a directional vector, which is a vector that is parallel to the line. Okay, And the addition of those two will actually give me another point on the line. Now, what we're going to have to do, being that this is only going to be limited to this particular point Q, and what we want to do is we want to find all the points that are on the line, then what we need to do is we need to go ahead and multiply PQ by a particular parameter T, which is an element of R, so it can be any number that you want it to be, so that in the end, what you're going to come up with is the resultant is going to point to any particular point, any line, any point on the line, given a particular value of t. Okay? Now let's just try to sum this up again. Let's think about what this is. If I go ahead and start off from O to P, and then I find the directional vector, which is, a, which is a vector that is parallel to the line, regardless of what scalar I multiply it by, the resultant of this position vector plus the directional vector times it by the scalar 
is going to give me another point that is on the line. And so what we can say then is that this is going to be the vector representation of a two-dimensional line. Now, let's go ahead and use this one in particular and say, for example, that we know that OP is just going to be 2, 2. That's going to be 2, 2 there. And I know that PQ, here's P to Q, this is my directional vector, is going to be 4 minus 2 and then 1 minus 2, so I know it's going to be equal to 2, negative 1. So the equation then, the vector equation of this particular line is going to be 2, 2 plus t times by 2, negative 1. It is the position vector plus t times it by the directional vector. Now notice that what I have here is I have two other lines that I have. Now notice what this is, is it says r is equal to 0, 3 plus t times it by 2, negative 1. Why is that true? Well, it's because I, instead of going to this point here, I went to a different point on the line. And remember that the position vector has to give you a point that is on the line. It doesn't matter which point it is, it has to be a point on the line. So I can change this position vector to whatever I want it to be, so long as it gives me a point that is actually on the line. Okay, and then notice that what I do is I do the same thing here with the directional vector. Now, take a look at the next example here. This next example says, well, let's say, for example, I start off at 0, 3, and then notice that I go plus t times it by negative 2, 1. Oh, wait a second. If I go negative 2, 1, isn't that mean that that's going to be a vector that is in directly the opposite direction? But remember, that is the direction of the line. It is still going to be describing the direction of the line, even though the vector is in the exact opposite direction. So notice again that so long as the direction, directional vector, is actually in parallel to the line itself, it doesn't matter what that vector is, so long as it is parallel to the line. So, those are three different ones, three different representations, vector, representa vector equation representations of this green line. Now, if we wanted to go ahead and take a look at the parametric form, all I'm going to do is I'm going to take either any one of these forms, and let's just take this form for example. I'm going to take this form and I'm going to say r is equal to 2, 2 plus t, 2, negative 1. And notice that if I go ahead and I talk about the vector r, or the resultant vector, really what it actually is pointing to, it's pointing to a coordinate x, y that is on the line. So what I can say then is that r is exactly the same thing as x, y, right, because that's going to be a point on the line. And then I can break this up and I can say, well, if this vector is equal to the sum of these two vectors, then I know that this component has to be equal to those components. This component has to be equal to those components. And so I can break it up into two different equations, x and y. Both x and y are dependent upon the parameter t, which is why they're called parametric equations. So you have the independent and the dependent variable both dependent upon a parameter t. And that's why those are going to be called the parametric equations or the parametric form of the equation of the line of this particular line in two dimensions. Okay, so when we go ahead and take a look at this then, let's kind of sum things up here. Oh, one other thing. Now when we go ahead and take a look at this, notice that the representation that you have for any line in vector form is not going to be unique. In other words, you're going to be able to find all different types of representations because OP and PQ could be so many different vectors. In the same respect, depending upon which one you choose here, then this also is not going to be unique as well, but there is going to be a connection, of course, depending upon which one you choose. Now, this one over here, though, is unique. Okay, So long as you go ahead and simplify, it is going to be one representation. And the thing that I would like to go ahead and challenge you right now is to find out how exactly can I go from each form to the other form because that's going to be absolutely essential for you to be able to do. Not only be able to find these representations, but to be able to convert between them. Okay? So, we'll go ahead. That was quite a bit. We'll go ahead and take a look at it in class. We'll take any questions then, and we'll see how you do. See you later. Bye-bye.